7 p.m. on May 3rd. I'd like to start the uh, May meeting of the Revere Conservation Commission. We have a quorum present. Uh, Member Joseph Laval. Yeah. Member Ann Raponi. Member Ann Raponi. Here. Member Jane Cervoni. Here. And I'm Andrew DeSantis, Chair. First item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes of April 5th, 2017. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? I'll second it. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Vote in the affirmative. Next item on the agenda is a continued public hearing notice of intent, DEP file 0610695, demolition of existing building and parking, and construction of new health center building and parking, East Boston Neighborhood Health Center. Do I have a motion to reopen the public hearing? I'll make the motion. I'll second. Are those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Vote in the affirmative. Mic is yours. Then turn the mic on, please, and identify yourself. Hi, good evening. Um, my name is John Perry, uh, engineer from Gale Associates, representing um, East Boston Neighborhood Health Center. And with me tonight is um, Steve Frazier from the Health Center and Kevin Verse from Ingenuity the Architect. Um, it, as you're aware, we resubmitted our uh, drawings um, a little more than a week ago with some minor changes. We um, um, just put a little more detail on there for some of the stormwater that's coming off of the building and, and connecting into the, uh, into the system, but everything else was largely unchanged from the last presentation that we gave. Okay, you had sent the drawings? Correct. Okay, I haven't picked them up yet. I forgot all about them. Okay. okay. Yep. Uh, we sent, I think it was eight. Uh, copies at okay. some point last week, so those are there. Um, but again, it was the very minor changes, uh, very, very similar to what we presented last time. Uh, none of the stormwater calculations changed or anything like that. Um, we do have the DEP file number now, which we didn't have um, at the last hearing, which I think was pretty much the only thing holding us up from closing the, the hearing. Um, one of my colleagues was at the last hearing. I wasn't available that night, so I wasn't. Could you speak into the microphone, please? Yes. Um, and we are still um, waiting, as you know, for DEP um, review comments. If there will be any, we, we, we don't know yet. They're, they've been a little bit um, non-responsive on that. But Yeah, you had emailed me and you wanted to close the public hearing. If we do that, we have to close on what we have right now. We can't change anything after that. Mm -hmm. So if DEP comments are issued and they don't get included, you're likely to have an appeal. So it's really your choice whether to continue until we hear DEP doesn't have comments or the issue. Well, typically what I've done in the past is, in this case, um, if DEP does issue comments and there are minor changes, we could pick those up in the plans and have them approved as just minor modifications. Is that something that would be entertained? If the minor comments. Right. Yeah, so you'd have to come back with those anyways. Right. Exactly. And I'm willing to do that if you're willing to take the risk. So it's up to you. I prepared an order of conditions. Okay. I think that we'd like to, to do that. Okay. Any Make questions? a motion to close the hearing. Motion to close by member Joseph LaValle. I'll second it. Hey, Nick. Good. I'd like to welcome member Nick Malason. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Voted in the affirmative. Okay, so we close the hearing. Uh, we'll sign this tonight. 
I've got to make copies and file with DEP. And uh, then I'll send it to uh, you, John. Yes, Thank you. You're welcome. Here you go, Joe. Next item on the agenda is a request for termination of applicability, 73 Linway, Keith Nowens. It's a public meeting, installation of prefabricated pergola kit. Keith, would you come up to the microphone, make sure it's on, the red light will press the button on the bottom. There you go. And just introduce yourself and tell us what you're planning. My name is Keith Nowens, and together with my wife Millie, who's here, we own 73 Linway in Revere. Uh, we've made uh, request for determination of applicability to uh, have a post and beam wooden pergola in our backyard, which we intend to use as a grape harbor. Uh, last week we were at the inspectional office and uh, our uh, plan was reviewed by the, all of the inspectors there and they said we did not require any kind of a permit and that uh, as long as we don't put up any roofs, doors, windows, um, Thanks. which we never intended to do, that we should be, we're good to go. Any questions for Mr. Nowens? I prepared a determination of applicability and it's uh, negative. The work described on the reference plans and documents is within an area subject protection under the act. And oh, let's check the wrong one. It will not require a filing. It's actually a negative one. Is it will not alter. So do we have a vote? Yeah, I'll motion for a negative determination. Motion. Second. For a negative. <coughs> by member James Cerboni. Second by Joseph Lavalle. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any aye. Opposed? Voted in the affirmative. Okay, we'll sign this tonight. They're going to make copies, and I'll send you uh, the original for your records. Great. Thank you for your time. Yep. Next item on the agenda is a public meeting request for termination of applicability, Garfield School, Safe Routes. The school pedestrian and bicycle safety improvements, uh, Mass DOT. Arthur? Yes, my name is Arthur Bonney. My name is Arthur Bonney. I'm the senior engineer project manager for this project uh, on behalf of Mass DOT. Um, I can explain uh, a bit of the project. I have some boards here to uh, show exactly what we're looking to do. Um, I'm just going to show yep. that right now. Go right ahead. Thank you, James. So the, uh, the project is a um, sidewalk rehabilitation project um, as part of the Safe Routes to School program. Uh, we are looking to um, reconstruct sidewalk and do very minor um, pavement resurfacing. Um, and part of the project lies within the LSCSF resource area. Uh, that's why we um, initiated the RDA uh, with the commission. Uh, later on through the evolution of the project, so the project is sidewalk reconstruction, pavement markings, some minor drainage to tie into existing drainage trunk lines. Um, the drainage will be catch basins with deep sump inlets. Um, and another portion of the project is a traffic signal minor reconstruction at the 
intersection of the Dick Street and North Shore Road. But the primary um, part of the project will be um, pavement resurfacing and sidewalk reconstruction at the um, Garfield School driveway uh, to, the, uh, to the south of the project area. Uh, throughout the evolution of the project, the city had, we're working with the city engineer uh, and also with the mayor. The, um, the city wanted to rehabilitate the existing uh, HMA walkway that is near a pedestrian overpass over the blue line at Garfield, r right at the edge of Avalon. Would you explain what HMA is? Uh, sure, I'm sorry about that. HMA is hot mixed asphalt, um, similar to pavement, um, bituminous concrete. Um, it's just a paved walking area. Um, the rehabilitation is very minor, uh, and we're looking to um, just remove and reset existing chain link fence next that, it, that runs along the pedestrian walkway. And the pedestrian walkway would be about 15 feet long maximum. Uh, so this work that's proposed is to facilitate pedestrian travel and connection with the pedestrian overpass over the blue line and, and connecting to the neighborhood. And that area, that area is within a hundred foot, the hundred foot buffer for a um, marsh, marshland. And even though the project is within the hundred foot buffer, the project is separated from the, um, the marshland is a result of a drainage uh, ditch, I believe, for the MBTA blue line. Uh, and so that ditch is separated from the project area by a, by a concrete wall in the location of where the construction would be, on, would, would occur. Um, so I, I bring that to your attention because that was part of the evolution of the project and initially when we had um, discussed this project it was the resource area of um, land subject to coastal storm flowage which is the blue line on the Sorry, I used blue line twice, but it's the blue line on the plan. And the red line is the 100, 100 year, I mean, I'm sorry, the 100 foot buffer. Uh, so I come before the commission to ask for uh, determination of uh, applicability. Member Sorrell? Yeah. Well, I think I need to recuse myself because okay. I work for Mass DOT, so. Yep, we got enough members that, that works. Uh, quick question. The chain link fence you refer to, is that the chain link fence of the MBTA preventing people from going on the track? Or is that a private uh, chain link? Uh, the chain link fence is on city property um, and it runs parallel to the walkway. Uh, so it, 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 it does not preclude one from entering the, the tracks. It's to guide, if you're coming off of the walkway, it's to guide you in a direction towards the street and not to go off to either side. There's a so little slope. perpendicular to the uh, MBTA right of way fencing. Correct, yeah. Okay. There's a little slope and it's so to protect people from the, yeah. from the slope. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Anything else? I see this as maintenance work. Okay. So. Uh, my feeling is a negative determination of applicability is appropriate under the exemption. So we have a motion to issue. I'll make a motion to issue with a, a negative uh, applicability. We have a second. Second. Um, so, sorry to interrupt, Mr. Chairman. I, I believe we have to do a continuance until the next meeting um, because we're not able to post legal notice. I understand that, but where it's on TV, I think uh, we're fine. Okay. There Thank you very much. Issue. Yep, because I know, I know there's a push to get this advertised, to get the land takings done. I know you're going to be up against it uh, as it is. Uh, the, the, uh, the, there will be a challenging timeline, and I appreciate um, the determination. 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Yeah, what I'll do after, if anybody raises an issue, I'll give them your contact information and you can talk to them. And yes, please. if they please. come back to the council, then we'll have to open it up again. Uh, Understood. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is a vote for certificate of compliance, DEP file 0610212, North Shore Road, DPAT Realty Trust. Uh, no work uh, authorized under the order of conditions was commenced. Mr. Simeone, put the microphone on, please. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the Revere Conservation Commission. This evening I have the pleasure of making a request for a certificate of compliance on behalf of my client, uh, George Filipponi, trustee of 1176 North Shore Realty Trust. And Mr. Filipponi has owned this land since 1996. The prior owner had received a certificate from this commission uh, in April of 1990. And um, I could do a heck of a lot better if I have glasses. Right? That was quick. Like so, did. in 1990, DPAT uh, owned the particular property. They sought an order of conditions, I believe, to deal with 80-foot uh, of banking. They were looking to rip-wrap it. And um, this order, which was identified as uh, DEP number 61212 and is attached to my, re my request for certificate of compliance, um, the work was never done, and this particular order has now lapsed in and is invalid. What the commission needs to know is that the order of conditions was appealed by an abutter in June of 1990, and that subsequently a superseding order of conditions was denied by the DEP, due in large fact uh, because they found uh, some of the plans and so forth to be inadequate, and in uh, sometime in, I believe it was uh, shortly thereafter, they found in addition, they found some um, uh, solid waste, about 30 cubic feet solid waste was deposited by these individuals uh, located in the uh, BVW area and, uh, and, that, and um, that needed to be removed. So a consent order was uh, provided by DPAT. Um, they entered into a consent order with a $4,000 penalty, and I provided you all this information, I think, by email, sir, but I did also provide for the commission tonight the June 16, 1994 letter from the DEP that says that the, or, the administrative uh, consent order was complied with by DPAT, DPAT and that um, basically no further work would be allowed without a new order of conditions. So the previous order was never worked on, was in fact ultimately denied and not further appealed. And at this point, um, this uh, is really a necessary only to clear title because there's an yeah, open certificate. Yeah, there was certificate subsequent order of conditions that right. work was done and the certificate of compliance was issued, but this was outstanding. Right. So they want the title examiners and the title people would like a certificate of compliance even though uh, it's a certificate of compliance that establishes that no work was done under this certificate. Okay. I prepared one. Which I Do think I we have talked a about motion before. to issue? I'll make a motion. Second? I'll second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Voted in the affirmative. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. So I'll copy it and then I'll send it to you later after we sign it. Joseph? Motion to adjourn. Make a motion. Second. I second it. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Adjourned at 720.